morning to all of you. Welcome to the Tata Institute of Social Sciences and to this training of trainers program for the course on digital literacy. The NUSSD is a very important program for the Tata Institute of Social Sciences. We consider that skill development for youth is going to be the most important agenda for youth. As you know, we have selected the National Social Service Scheme as the vehicle to put through this whole idea. What we want to do through this is a pilot program of three years during which we want to put through around 50,000 students across nine states, around 30 colleges across. We have a certificate in management and soft skills consisting of about 20 credits. The Certificate in Management and Soft Skills has seven courses, English Communication, Digital Literacy, Youth Leadership and People Skills, Legal Literacy, uh, Working with Communities, and Financial Literacy. With regard to Digital Literacy, we consider in our foundation courses this to be a very critical course. It is a course which will involve the student with the community right from the start. And that is a surprise for you, and I leave that to Nagarjuna, sir, to tell you about it. I would like to uh, certainly uh, express my gratitude, first of all, to Tata Institute of Social Science for giving us this opportunity to actually design and make this course. At one time, people used to ask, do you know how to read, write? And usually, that is what literacy means. Now, a new challenge comes up, how to type. So these are the four important skills that you need to know. So once you know one language, you have to know read, write, speak, and type. That's the entry to the digital literacy. If you want to make a person digitally literate, uh, particularly in India, you have to make that person type in at least two languages. So that is one of the important uh, components that we have included in this digital literacy course. Uh, just tell me how many people in India speak English? What's the percentage? Three to four percent. Anybody else? 20 to 25 percent. So certainly all of them can't be right. Three to five percent of the people in this India speak English. And how many people actually know at least how to read and write their mother tongue, 70%. So now think about it. So you have 5% of people who are ready to use a computer. Why? Because most computers that you know are good for working in English. So what does it mean? That we have to now make these 70% people who are already able to read and write any Indian language be able to access a computer. So that is one of the reasons why the most important skill that we in India need when we are using computers is how to work in Indian languages. So we should be able to make a large number of people work on computers using their own language so that the entry of digital literacy will become much more faster. And secondly, a large number of government documents are in the local languages. So making that accessible also is a very important uh, uh, aspect of this. And I, I'm sure all of you are convinced that uh, that is very important. And how many people in India use mobiles? Do you have a percent of that? 90%. Okay, above 90%. Anybody else? 18 to 20%. Like, so we have a range from 18 to 20% to 90%. Do you know how many mobile connections are there? Uh, what is the population of the country? 1.2 billion. So there are about half a billion mobile connections in India. If you cut down everything, 20% is possibly around the right number. So what does it mean? There are 5% people who speak English, 70% people who can read, write some language or the other, and there are about 20% people who have access to a computer. 
Why am I saying computer? Because every mobile phone is a computer. These are the kind of numbers that we have to talk about. So now, if you want to bring in some change uh, in trying to understand this new medium, we have to keep these figures in mind. If we have to understand the impact of our program over a few years, we will be able to do some significant change in these numbers. So now, what uh, I'm going to give you is an idea about uh, what are the various components of the digital literacy course. But one of the important uh, objectives that we wanted to keep uh, while designing this course, that most Indians are consumers, particularly in digital domain. And very few of them are actually contributors, that is producers. So this is also another important thing that we need to change. I am sure all of you know what is Wikipedia, right? You have any idea how many pages Wikipedia has? The second question I'm asking is, how many of those pages are English pages? Okay, and the third question that you have to find out, answer for is, how many of those pages are of any Indian language? And the other question is, how many users work on Wikipedia? We will get down to the actual numbers. Uh, that will be very interesting, because that actually proves is that most of us are consumers, we are not producers. You may think that, you know, this correlation is sort of indirect, but it reflects the societies which are active, the societies which are economically uh, empowered, are also the people who are contributing a lot to the Wikipedia. So if your country has to be useful to the rest of the world, okay, you should not be a consumer, but you should be a producer. And that is also one of the reasons why this course has been designed in such a way that it will make the students producers and not consumers. While we are working with digital literacy, we are also including certain cultural aspects of their life. And the culture of making, the culture of sharing, and culture of seeking from the colleagues so that they can participate with us. However, all of us have learned computers only when we have access to it. So as long as possible, you should try to make the computer lab accessible to the students. And that is the success of this course. So as much as possible, you try to encourage them to get into the lab, encourage them to work with the various things. So you should not be saying something like, OK, you have completed your one and a half hours, now they leave the lab. Making the computer available is one thing, and the second important thing, of course, is making sure that that computer is connected to the rest of the world. We have an online platform where the course is accessible to both the teachers as well as the students in the same place. So you would also be like a student when you are taking the course, in the sense that you will be part of the uh, people who are enrolled, enrolled for the course. Second important uh, thing that we're going to do is how we are going to evaluate people who are going to do digital literacy course. What do you think could be a test for checking whether a person knows how to, let us say, type in their mother tongue? Give him a newspaper cutting or uh, make, uh, tell him to type in Hindi by watching this or something. Ask them to write something of their own, uh, asking to write for an application or something of a, uh, or a letter to someone. Okay, can some more ideas come from? Uh, I would like uh, to ask them to write about their family. What I'm looking at is that if they have done that, you would pass the person in this particular module. Most of us, as people who have been taught in regular colleges and schools, we have always been content driven. The most interesting thing is that, when do we create our own content? What is the context when we actually create our own content? Not something that you ask me to give the content back to you. So skill recognition has to be that kind of test. So as soon as, for example, a person will be able to digitize his question and ask you, and then seek a reply from you, or say, for example, he will have an email exchange with you, 
He is learning two things. One, he is learning how to send emails. And the second important thing that he is learning is, he has actually learned the reason why he is literate in his own language. So to ensure that both the student as well as you are aware of what are those things that he should pass, so we have created a checklist like that for the entire course. So each student has to, for example, uh, tick on his own to know whether the person already has an email account, okay, and should be able to send and receive and reply to emails. So once he passes these four tests, that means now we can go ahead and ask him to, for example, come and register on our platform. So I will uh, stop this part of the morning session right now. And uh, I have uh, Professor Parasuraman here, so I want him to say a few inspiring words. Okay. Um, thanks, Professor Nagarjun. Uh, thanks to all of you to uh, make this trip to Mumbai. Let me, uh, let me broadly tell you um, why this program. Uh, I think 2009, uh, the Secretary, Ministry of um, Youth Affairs, um, she wanted to do a review of the National Service Scheme. That how can National Service be far more focused and far more useful? The idea was very simple. Out of all the people who finish um, graduation, what percentage of them may get job? You have any idea? 18 percentage or 20 percentage may get job. Out of all people who manage to get a job, 65 percent of the people don't get job in what they studied. So basically, there is a disconnect between um, what we teach and employment potential and where you work. The major problem is that our students go to university, but they end up with neither the knowledge in the, on the subject nor employable skills. So the idea was brought in, can university students, when they enroll for their first year of um, graduation, can they also be enrolled for um, some skill-oriented programs? So we thought that we'll use the free time to provide um, the skills. We said whichever the student who is interested in gaining skills, can we can import skills. So the idea was that uh, we start with motivational programs. And then we move on to introduce a, a, you know, the digital platform, digital literacy. And then we add on to uh, the financial literacy. You know, everybody wants people to have financial literacy. Um, so financial literacy, legal literacy, and working with the communities. So the idea is that we create a new cadre of young people with knowledge on various aspects of life skills so that they don't depend upon government or industry to get employment. They can be entrepreneurs. Rural Development Department can employ them. There could be lots of employment opportunities. So what I'm trying to tell you is that this is a program we want to see that through this process, we reach out colleges and universities where proper education doesn't happen, or happens, but to empower them with skills so that they become employable, they are skilled. You are on a great mission where you are, you are going to create a digital platform. So basically what happens is that by creating a digital literacy, you can teach everything through digital platform. And so he, now what all these fellow has learned? This fellow has learned to type. This fellow has learned to do the spreadsheet. This fellow has learned to um, calculate and also interpret. To do that, you are the most important people. So this is where I think we have, we, have, we, have, we have come here. And this is what we need to, um, we need to move ahead with that. What is the hope? The hope is that if we can, if even at, at, the, if at the end of it, if 300 children get employment properly, and if by next year, 
3,000 children get proper employment. And in three years' time, 50,000 young people don't get employment. I think job is done. Our young people must have the opportunity to gain skills so that they create a better future for themselves and for the nation. If, you, if we fail in this mission, what is going to happen is that they will find some other way of making a future. You know, we as teachers, I think this is a responsibility we have. We want to make this program happen, and with you, we can make it happen. Can we? Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Thank you.